Hey, what is up, guys? It is your boy, Skinny Sidus, back at it again with the same joke. Coming to you with the, the Side Piece Anime Podcast, your place away from your main squeeze for anime and manga content. Um, today we have, here in the flesh, Jason Voorhees. Indeed. In- in- indeed. We also have Angela. Hello. Alright, guys, how are you, how are you feeling? Excited. Excited? <laughs> a little disappointed we got the time wrong. Yeah, it came out earlier today for it, some for no reason. Yeah, I just woke up and it was a notification on my phone saying that the 1000th chapter was out. I'm like, what? And then I checked and it was there. Yeah, it came out way earlier than I expected. Well, not way earlier. It was like an hour that's too early for me (laughs) he's like i said what i said all right guys well since it's already out why don't we just get right into it oh yeah all right so here we get the other half of the cover page um we get we get brooke with his shiny gold hair for some reason holding the other part of the saber oh there's your boy jinbei Indeed. You were just asking about Jinbei. I was. You were. Um, we got Nami. With 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 uh with, crown? Yeah, with a crown. That's that's what I was gonna point out about <laughs> Nami. But yeah, it looks really good, honestly. I don't know why Jinbei's holding a golden sword. You know, but at least he's holding something besides yeah. the reins of the Straw Hat crew. Aren't they all like gold, though? Yeah, I think that I think that was the kind of the point of the the cover spread this time. But one thousand, man, this is surreal. Before we even start, man, it's it's been a journey. It's been a journey, Jason. This is your first time reading a chapter as it comes out, isn't it? It is. I remember we were talking about this yesterday. How the thousandth chapter of One Piece is the first one I'm reading, like as it comes out. And that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it, it's it's a new experience. Um, definitely a new experience. I like, you know, it. It's it's different to experience One Piece this way, you know, mm-hmm. where um, like when you're binging it, you get all of it condensed, but now you're getting it piece by piece by piece. And sometimes Oda does this thing where he like gives you something, and he's like, all right. I'll, I'll be back with that in 200 chapters. You gotta wait for it. And it sets the community on fire, man. It's like, what What does this mean? What does that mean? Oh, man. It's what he does. That's why they call him the master. Angela, anything you, you'd like to note about, about this? Um, just that it's a very special chapter. Yeah, yeah. Very special. Angel's not as enthralled with this as we are, Jason. <laughs> She's like, yeah, 1,000, big deal. No. The, uh, the Jolly Roger has the straw hat flag on his hat. He does. Isn't that the uh, the original one that Luffy drew? That's no, all his messed was, up? his was much shittier than this. <laughs> his was much shittier than this. Yeah, I guess. This is more like crooked when it came to the jawline. Yeah. Still rocking that Gold Roger mustache. Indeed. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. See, look, Nami has those milk trucks you like so much, babe. I just <laughs> want to read. I want to read. Oh, okay, all right. You want, do you want to read the first couple pages? No, but I want to okay. see what happens. <laughs> okay, Jason, you want to start? Then I can. Then Angela, would that be all right? Oh, God, yeah, let's go for it, I guess. Let's go for it. All right, we pop up inside the castle, fifth floor, and Luffy notices something. And chapter 1000, Straw Hat Luffy. 
Oh, Jesus. Uh, we've got, uh, who the hell is talking right now? Oh, the Three Musketeers? Yeah. This is about the only thing we can do to help, but go ahead. The stairs to the roof are just before you. Thanks, Lion Viper. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he called him that. He's just like, it's she's a lion. Shillian. She's Shillian. Shillian. <laughs> she's a lion. It looks so weird separated. I don't know. <laughs> you're good. You're good. We got a little interaction between she's a, she's a lion. She's a lion. <laughs> Shillian. <laughs> she's Shillian. And Luffy. <laughs> And, uh, you know, nice little interaction about how Luffy will never forget how they risked their lives to protect Rizo. And, uh, thanks, I'll be back. And that's, uh, Shishilian crying, isn't it? Yeah, he's crying. That's not good. That's not good. I'm so scared, man. Uh, cut to the next page. We got the Keen and Queen versus Marco fight. Uh, Queen. Damn it, what's with his powers? Is he invincible? And, uh, King just says, Fim. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're kind of just ganging up on Marco, and he doesn't really care. Uh, easy now, easy. Stop freaking out and let the man go. And he throws Zoro? <laughs> he throws Zoro <laughs> in, through the hole in the ceiling. <laughs> what a chat. Don't just toss me. Oh, and we cut back here. We got Momonosuke and Yamato. D, and this is in my father's journal. Yamato gets a nice smile, which I agree. Uh, I wanted to put this on public record. I agree that Yamato will become yes. a straw hat. I've been calling this for like 150, whatever, however long he's, our Yamato's been here. I've been calling it, man. I just want it so bad. Uh, this is Yamato, I believe. Honestly, I never truly believed that I would get the chance to meet you. This is for you, of course. I picked it out of the river at the foot of Odin Castle on that terrible day. Someone must have kept his journal safe from the burning castle. It contains everything there is to know about Odin's great- Oh my god. Does it have the secret of One Piece in it? It very possibly could. Oh my god. Oh my god. Momonosuke cries a little bit. Father. Alright, well I guess I pick it up now. Oh, we're going into a small flashback. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> We get Yamato continuing to talk as we see Law and Kid. We, Yamato's like, you were born on Whitebeard's ship, weren't you? And then you were on Roger's ship. Momonosuke you know, with the dots. They said that in the future, over 20 years later, the new world here would be overrun by young, powerful new pirates. And that's what's happening now. He's in shock. He's like, what? Oh my god. New world? What the fuck are you talking about? He, he's just a poor boy from a poor family. I'm just a poor boy. <laughs> uh, I believe that, uh, that Ace was first and foremost among them. But when he died, I remembered something. You get a flashback to Ace. And Ace, ah! Shoot, that was a slip of the tongue. I wasn't supposed to say that. You didn't hear that. Forget about it. Uh, anyway, don't laugh at that. Me and Sabo won't allow it. Yamato's like, what? She's clearly shocked. It's like, that's at the end of my little brother's dream. Sure, when Luffy first said it, we laughed, but that's okay. No one else can laugh. We believe in him. I really think he can make it happen. And that's why... Ace! And she, like, fucking, I don't know, hugs him or something. I don't know, stands up, I guess. I can't wait to see how she's gonna sound in the anime. Oh, Jesus. I, don't, I hope they do something like one of those, like, gender-neutral voices... Just yeah, really androgynous fuck people. Yeah, because <laughs> you know the whole community's like, I don't know. We we got Mister Two and we got Ivankov and all these different members of the LGBTQ plus community in One Piece, and then they draw the line at Yamato for some reason. Right. So there's this huge Twitter war going on about Yamato and his pronouns. I'm like, what, what the fuck ever. Uh, Ace is like, hey, what what's the deal, Yamato? Uh. Yamato's like, I'm not gonna laugh at him. Oh, that's basically saying he's gonna be king of the pirates, baby! Oh my god! Uh, Yamato um, thinks back. Those are the words the king of the, of the pirates spoke. Words that stunned Odin. Oh my god. In, in, 
In the Journal of Kosuke Odin, there was a great man who said the same thing. Oh yeah? A great man, huh? That's good to hear. Maybe one day me and Luffy should sit down with him for a drink. Ha ha ha, I bet, I bet you, you, you would have gotten along. Would have. Well, he's already dead. You're talking about a dead guy? And I guess, oh, Yamato makes the Vivri card for Ace. Okay, there, it's done. Huh? It's just a piece of paper. Um, so I, I want to touch on this really quick. When, when, when they said something about that's what Luffy said, there was this time back when Luffy, Sabo, and Ace were kids, and Luffy was like, here's the thing, I'm gonna, and then it cuts away, and Sabo and Ace are laughing at him, right? When Roger meets Odin and Whitebeard, he does the same exact fucking thing, and it cuts away, and doesn't tell us what it is. And so I'm like, that's gonna be it. It can't be Luffy going, I'm gonna be king of the pirates. Right. It can't be Roger going, I'm gonna be king of the pirates. What the fuck is it? I don't know what it is. I'm so excited, dude. All right, Angela. I read my three pages. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. <laughs> and, uh, so... Uh, Yamato's like, yes, but that piece of paper will bring us together again. Tear off a bit of it and give it to your friends. Uh, you don't want to lose track of, or people you want to meet again. And like, oh! And Yamato's, let's meet up again one day, Ace. And Ace holds up his VV card and he's like, you bet. Now we go back to the present. Um, Yamato says, and then one day, Ace's car just disappeared. Shortly after that, I learned the truth from the newspaper. I learned that Ace was Roger's son, and that his little brother really had made a name for himself as a pirate. That was Luffy, the man you brought here. This is what Odin wrote about the future. And we have Luffy, Huff Huff. Oh Ooh, my got a god! Double spread. Oh my god! It's a double spread. You get to read the double spread, babe. I'm jealous. Oh my god. Okay, we cut back to Luffy. He's all surprised. Um, we see, I believe, Big Mom. Um, on her cloud, we have Kaido. I think Law's there. Yeah, Law's there. And Zoro. Zoro. Um, kid, I think. I think so. We read the top okay. ten, top panels. Okay, so we have kid, and here's another one. All of you, stay back and watch me fight. And then Kaido's like straw hat, and we cut Big Mom. All these fetching young heads ripe for the taking. And then over twenty years in the future. Powerful pirates leading the next generation will come swarming into the new world. If I'm dead by then, they will be the ones to strike down Kaido. Oh. Jason, take it away, buddy. All right. We cut, uh, uh, nice. Luffy just breaks the serious tension and just goes, ah. Ah. <laughs> And Kaido and Big Mom are just kind of, you know, surprised, I guess, that that's what he does. Yeah, we got Kaido here. Lean, lean. Can you guess what the boy said he would become right to my face? Oh, he's a saucy one. Saucy. <laughs> I love Big Mom, man. Big Mom's cool. He's like talked a big mom. game to me, too. And he destroyed my castle. You have any apology for that one, straw hat. Hold up. He just walks right by him? Oh, that's such a Chad move. What big dick energy. Oh, yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, God. We get into a serious moment right now. Uh, you know, Kaido's, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, perturbed? No, not perturbed, but like egging him on. Yeah. Like, hey, fight me, bastard. Yeah. Tell us what you're going to be right here so we can hear you. And Luffy just doesn't care, and he walks up to a Kinamon who's kind of really messed up. 
You alright, Kinamon? I'm sorry it took me so long. Damn, this is heavy. Yeah. And uh, he notices that the rest of the Yakuza and I, not just Kinamon, all got their asses beat. And I'm guessing I'm going to turn the page. He's going to be pissed. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh man. What a page. What a page. Mm. Oh, is this Kinamon's dying words right now? I hope not. At last, when I pass on, I have nothing to show Lord Odin but my shame. That is a really good panel right oh, there. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, I'm about to start crying on this podcast, man. All right, it's not my turn. And you get to finish it off right now. Oh, shit, do I? Yeah. No, I think Angela gets the last one. Oh, the last page is Angie's? I think so. Well, maybe. <clears throat> Kinemon grabs Luffy's cloak. He's like, will you put Wano on your back? And Luffy goes, of course I will. It's my friend's country. Kinemon, you know, starting to lose consciousness. Um, Kaido turns around. He's like, hey, boy. Uh... Kinemon's like, Sir Luffy! Luffy don't know. Luffy asks Trafalgar Law to send them all down down below, which he obliges. <clears throat> oh my god, another another good spread. Hey, you'll notice that Law looks just as pissed as Luffy. Oh dude, yeah. Uh Kaido takes a swing down but misses Luffy. <clears throat> Um, he, he, he's up in the air. Luffy kind of spun up in the air a little bit. He rears back with a, a gear third gum gum. He's thinking back. He's thinking back to all these times as he's rearing up this punch. <clears throat> um, with the, with the minks on Zo, the Rizo is alive and well part. That got me when I was reading it. I started bawling when I heard, when I saw that. <clears throat> With Nekomamushi going, we would never sell a comrade to an enemy. Momonosuke crying, how he wants to defeat Taito, and how Kinemon told everyone how uh, they crossed through time to arrive there from Wano 20 years ago. They see uh, Yasuie's death. The, the friendly oddball of Ibisu Town shall make the final grand journey. They see Grandpa Hyoguro. The fire of rebellion still burns. The sparks have not gone out. And Kinemon finishing up with Lord Odin, beloved by all, was taken to the flower capital as a criminal tried and executed. We see Kaido glaring at Luffy. Luffy coming down. I believe that's that's like hockey coming around him, around around Luffy. Yeah, that's the that's a, Rio. Yeah, Rio. Rio. Yeah. And he delivers a massive punch to Kaido, who seems shocked, with blood coming out of his mouth, which is much different. Um, Alright, Angela, final two pages. What's the attack name? Attack name is Red Rock. And it looks like he actually throws Kaido down. Um, he punches him so hard, he hits the ground and cracks it. Wow. And then, um, I think it's Big Mom. He, he shouts, Kaido, what are you doing? How could you let him take you like that? And then, um, Luffy says, I am Monkey D. Luffy, and I'm the man who will surpass you to be king of the pirates. Oh, man. Well, it looks like we were wrong. Well, I thought the Will of D was going to be explained. I really did, too. That would have been a cool 1,000, but I'm pretty satisfied with this chapter. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with this chapter, man. Red Rock is dope. Red Rock. Your third Red Rock. Which makes you wonder if that's just the name of, like, all of his Rioa attacks, or if it's just, like, this one. It might like lift gear third instead of uh instead of Ryuo, it might just be like the gear third version of Red Hawk. Exactly. 
yeah. Dang, dude. Dang. Damn. That was a chapter, all right. Definitely was a chapter. And is he? Oh, never mind. That's just him putting his hat back on. Man, and Kaido looks really hurt from that. He does. Like, I'm not, not even hurt. Like, uh, I'd almost even argue a hint of scared. Big Mom looks pretty surprised. <laughs> Maybe, uh,. I don't know what I don't know how this matchup is gonna go with the uh, um, the worst generation versus the Yonko because if Luffy can deck Kaido like that, I think he has a good chance to take one of them by himself. I do too, because um, you know both the emperors we've been setting up so far have been like you can't you can't hurt us. We got hard skin, haha. -ha. It might be a case of, I don't know how they're going to split it up, because if it's a two exactly. on five, I mean, I think maybe. Well, Drake is somewhere around two. Yeah, but but isn't think... he fighting Apu right now? Yeah, he's protecting Chopper. Yeah. Down there. Yeah. I can't believe you called Big Mom's Zeus a cloud, <laughs> Angela. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> Big Mom's sitting on her cloud. Well, I didn't want to say it wrong again, because... I think she was on a different one before, and I didn't know if it was Prometheus or Zeus. Prometheus is the fireball. Right, but she has rode Prometheus before. Yeah, in whole take. Yeah. Because she didn't have Zeus. Zeus was all bitching out. Oh, man. Simping over them me. thunder eggs. But dude, I'm, now I'm like really curious as to what Luffy and Roger said if it's been that important. It has to be related to the Will of D. Like that, that totally, right? I, I really hope so, you know. Man, oh man. Angela, what are your thoughts on the chapter? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> It was good. I liked it. It was interesting. I liked it a lot. I really like the last part where we see his new um, move. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what he was practicing, was doing that without actually touching Kaido. Because when you look at the panel, you just see his fist but it doesn't really make contact with Kaido. Isn't that just hockey? Oh, hey. If you do look at the panel where it, where he do, uh, decks fucking Kaido in the face, you can kind of see a little aura around his fist. Yeah, and he, he... I don't know if that's just the drawing style, but he doesn't touch Kaido. And isn't that what he was practicing? That is what he was practicing, which is Ryuo. Maybe he's just gonna add Ryuo to all of his attacks, and maybe he won't. Because I thought that he might have like another Gear Fourth form where it's all like Ryo based, you know. But that maybe, would that would be weird. Yeah. But cool. Maybe it's not gonna be like that. Maybe it's just gonna be a permanent power up. But yeah. how how do you do that though? Because the the Gear Fourth is based around like the muscle balloon, but then he also uses his armament hockey to like control like his rubber. Right. right, right, but maybe your fit. Rio or Rio is like an extension, like it's out of his body right. when he uses it. I can't really see how he could use that as part of Gear Fourth. Well, he's using it as Gear Fifth as well. What? Well, I... You know, he's, there's no Gear Fifth. I'm sorry, Gear Third. Shit. 
<laughs> right, but that that that's not like a new form of Gear right. Third. It's just it's like right. That's just, what I was saying, which was like me. I thought maybe at the beginning it was it would be a new Gear Fourth form, but maybe it's just a permanent power right. up now. You know. I don't think there will be a Gear Fifth. Probably not. I don't think that it, it, there will be a necessity. I don't right. even know if he's gonna uh, fuck with his devil fruit any more than he has. Right, he's already taken it so far. Mm. But like, the only thing he really could do is awaken it. And at that point, you know, what is he gonna do? Like, what? realistically speaking, what is the advantage of turning the environment into rubber? Unless he wanted to do something like, uh, you know, like Bellamy's attacks. Mm. But the thing is, he can already do that on his own. We saw that in Dressrosa. Well, you could make the argument that it keeps the opponent kind of on uneven playing ground, you know? Right, but that's never how Luffy is rolled. Right, right. One of our dogs just left the room. I don't know what she's doing. I think I disturbed her with me moving around. Oh. I still really want to see Yamato's devil fruit. Yeah, she kind of hinted, or he kind of hinted it. Oh, man. Well, he had Sea Prism Stone on, which would imply, yeah. you know. And it, it'd be different if it was, like, the like actual, like, closed handcuffs. It was, like, the chains to, like, keep your arms together, but it wasn't. It was just the cuff on his right arm. Well, there were chains off it, but he broke Right, but they, they were broken. Yeah. And at that point, like, it's obvious that they're being used for devil fruit powers. Right. Chill out, Jenny. Chill out. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You feel better now? Yeah, that's right. Man, this was a good chapter. How do you feel about it, Jason? Like, is it, it was it a good first chapter to start your weekly adventure on? It was. It was awesome. It, you know, it was, was a lot more of a wild experience than if, like, I started on a chapter, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some boring chapter. Um, When, like, Chopper meets the, quote, new Straw Hats oh, yeah. at Return to Sabah Odi. Like, it, th this just hit different than it would have if it was like that. Right. Because this is an awesome one, dude. Um, fuck, I'm trying to think of how they're going to split up the, the fighting. Maybe it'll be, like, Luffy and Zoro versus Kaido. Because they have the most grudge against Kaido. Maybe everyone else versus Big Mom. Especially since Cracker lost... They're not Cracker. Uh, uh, kid lost his arm versus Cracker. Um, so he has a grudge against Big Mom. That might be something. But then he's also kind of pissed at Kaido. Right, that's the thing. Like, you gotta think about Killer, too. The yeah. only person Killer really cares about right now is Kaido. And then you got Law, who's just chilling. <laughs> right. Law's here like, I'm here because I... I have to be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Man. That's interesting, though, about who is going to be fighting Big Mom. Damn. I... I almost think... That... Uh, no, that doesn't really make much sense either. Because thinking about it, none of those worst generation people besides Luffy have any reason, you know, to fight Big Mom. But besides the fact that she's there. Right. You know? But, uh, you know who does? Nami and Sanji. Nami and Sanji. <laughs> Nami and Sanji. Which, I mean, it's not gonna happen, but... It would be really awesome to see, like, worst generation v. Kaido and then Straw Hats v. Big Mom. But with the way everything's panning out right now, it's it's not gonna happen. It would be cool, but it's not gonna happen. What I really wanted was Luffy versus Kaido and Big Mom, or Luffy and Zoro versus both of them. But I don't I don't think that's realistic in terms of how strong Luffy is right now. Um, or Zoro, because you gotta think like that. That puts Zoro on Yonko level, not just Luffy. But well, Luffy I mean, and Zoro. I don't. I don't know about the whole Yonko level power scaling shit, you know. But like, Zoro does have Enma, which was the only sword to cut Kaido. And we saw how powerful Enma is. Well, it's not true anymore. Well, because yeah. yeah, 
because uh, Ionian did cut him. But yeah. It was the first. And the it, only it for a long time. It was the deepest cut, too. <clears throat> Be a part of the discussion. I'm not a big discussion person like you guys are. Well, why don't you just give us your thoughts and theories? Give, give us. Yeah, what do you think the will of D is? I've never heard your thoughts on that. Come on, Angela, give us your thoughts and theories. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What do you mean? Well, what's, what's wrong? You gotta think about it. Who do you think is gonna fight? Big Mom and Kaido. Huh? I honestly think, I don't know, it'll pop. I think Spill Luffy is the only one that could beat Big Mom right now. I don't think anyone else could. Because he... I think Big Mom fucked up by not bringing Katakuri to Wano. <laughs> I really don't think anybody else could be Big Mom. Well... Law theoretically could. Because Law doesn't have to give a shit about her defense. Mm -hmm. He gets to just ignore it. You know, of Radio Knife, Gamma Knife, uh, Injection Shot, Room, just normal Room. <laughs> yes. Um, damn. Something we missed was uh, Yamato gave the journal to Momonosuke. I know, I, I said that. Oh. I said that Momonosuke has the journal now. Oh. We're gonna get a Marco versus Queen and King fight, maybe? Versus both of them at once? That'd be pretty dope. That would be pretty dope. I mean, Marco was the de facto captain of the Whitebeard Remnants. Mm-hmm. So. Hmm. I'm starting to think. I think it'll be Zoro and Killer to fight Big Mom. And then the trio will fight Kaido. Because you gotta think, this is the trio they've been pushing since Sava Odi. You know, with the. Uh, oh, yeah. With the slave trade place. So, do you, you think, like, Zoro and Killer are gonna go up against Big Mom? I think that's gonna. I think that's how it's gonna turn out. That, that, I, I can see that. Because I mean, Big Mom isn't heralded as the strongest creature, you know. Right. And is. outside of her defense and her soul soul fruit, she's got, you know, just basic strength. You know. Well, this is also like Zoro also fucked up Killer with with one attack. Right. So, Killer being here might not be as threatening as what is being let on. Yeah, that's fair. Man. <clears throat> Man. Well, Jason, do you want to move away from Chapter 1000 for the moment and talk about the movie we watched yesterday? The movie we watched yesterday was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, One Piece Stampede. One yeah. Piece Stampede. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um... What, what were your general thoughts on that? You're the, the person who watched it. Uh, you're, you're the newest person who watched it out of the three of us. So we've had time to sit on our thoughts for about two years now. Um, well, like you said when I was getting into it, it is basically one big old battle fest. But what I really liked about it was, even though it was a movie, and a non-canon movie at that, which all the One Piece movies are, but... Is that it really gave Usopp another time to shine. And, um, remind me if I'm wrong, but Nami has actually never gotten to use Zeus Tempo. Maybe in She a... did it on accident in Holgag Island. Yeah. But she never got to use it, like, on purpose. Because she got Zeus... And then she never got in a fight again before Big Mom took Zeus back. Oh, I think maybe she did it um, when she was trying to rescue Robin from the infiltration mission. 
remember when she was like trying yeah, to... Yeah, that's right. I think right. that's the only, did, other time. the only other time she's used her Zeus tempo. But it was nice to see that. And uh, that was a new attack from Usopp too. The one, the delayed one. And I pointed this out when we were watching it. But Usopp was the first and the last person to leave any sort of scratch even on Bullet's armor. Yeah. Because when the worst generation was fighting him and he had his armor, none of them were doing anything. And it was Usopp's one attack that broke his finger. That was the first thing that made a crack. And then, of course, his last attack. Right, right. Um, so, what, what, how would you rate the movie? Like, are you, a, are you kind of a big fan of it? Do you think that it's something you'd watch again? It's something I'd watch again simply because it is, you know, one big old fight fest. And, uh, One Piece doesn't have a ton of fights in it, so I can easily see it being, you know, like a movie I watch when we get to, like, the next arc, and, you know, there hasn't been any fight scenes for a while, and I can just go, okay, well, I'll just watch Stampede again. Stampede had a lot of good fights in it, too. It did. <clears throat> like, the, the Zoro versus Fujitora clash got me hype. Yeah, the, with the, the Encore yeah so we watched it dubbed <laughs> well we watched it dubbed angie didn't want to read subtitles yeah it was it was pretty late uh angie didn't want to read any uh any any words at that time oh god <clears throat> bartolomeo's stub voice yeah Bar uh, do you do you have any other uh dub voices you want to critique like good or well, bad well here's the thing i think overall it, it works like it works for bartolomeo Right. But when I got to Dress Rosa was the first arc I watched where I didn't have the option of going to the dub if like, you know, I didn't want to read subtitles that day. Right. So this was my first time hearing his dub voice after I had known everything about his character development, you know, his growth near the end of Barity Barity No Pistol, you know, all of that. And then get to hear his dub voice and it just didn't. I don't know, it just didn't hit the same. And they took away my favorite thing about him. You know, he doesn't... It, it'd be different if, it, like, they still kept the Mr. L -l 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 Luffy, but it was just Mr. Luffy. Yeah. Instead of L -l 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 Luffy, senpai! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... Bartolomeo kind of shocked... Like, that, that's, that's one of my major problems with the dub, is, like, a lot of the voices work, but I don't think they're the best... You know, like, uh, like, the sub for, I don't know why, I don't know why, but, like, the sub, most, if not all, the voices are, like, spot on, exactly what they should be. Well, I do, I do really like Post Time Skip Nami, Usopp, and, oh, God, uh, it was a, it was a side character, I'm trying to remember their name, give me a second, but I do really like their voices, and... I may get some flack for this. I I like Dub Usopp's voice better than Sub Usopp's, actually. I I agree with you. If I'm honest, it just fits. It fits, you know, the voice for what you know they're trying to go with. You know, um, I think you know, scared ass person. I think Krillin. You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that's kind of the connection I make there. Zora wasn't a bad casting choice either. Yeah. Yeah. Zora wasn't that bad. Um, Zora wasn't that bad. Uh, Kid was was exactly what I thought the dubbed voice for Kid would be. Right. Which is just Vegeta. Jeez, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, man. I don't really like Law's dub voice, which, as far as I'm aware, is kind of an unpopular opinion. You don't like it? Well, like, compared... It's just... Specifically, it's the way he says shambles in, in the dub. There's no emphasis on it. It's just shambles. Yeah, it, it, he's very laid back. You know, the performance is very apathetic. Which I mean, yeah, right, Law is an it, apathetic it, person. It fits but... his character, but it, you know, it just yeah, it just doesn't work the same way as the sub did. And I was I was talking to you about this yesterday, but like the dub does this thing with their voices where they put like distortion or like I don't know some effect on their like big attack yeah. names or if they're giant as fuck. 
they'll put some like most of what bullet says in the dub i could not understand what he right was you had to like hyper focus yeah i had to be like bits and pieces and then put the sentence together after he says it <clears throat> well i don't think the reason for that is like the dub's fault well, i mean it is the dub's fault they did it but it's like the more americanization way of it you know right like you every english anime i can think of does that you know like uh dragon ball super specifically think of like any dub moment especially in the tub of uh tournament of power anything had the distortion on it all the kamehameha's final flash usually has it you know even like a normal ass final flash not even like an important one and that sucks too because the original dub was not like that at all like the original dub didn't even have that like not for super but for like fucking z they would, you know, maybe they had distortion on the last, like, ha in Kamehameha. But, like, it was, you could understand what they're saying. They, there was no, like, even Broly, you can understand what Broly was saying, you know. But now they they are doing this echo shit. I can't, I can't deal with it. Right, because, you know, it hypes up the Western audience who's all about the fight scenes. Oh, it's shonen. If, if someone's not beating their ass, I don't care what's going on. You know? And I hate people like that. There are people who really hated Hunter x Hunter. Because, you know, like, the first season had no fight. Like, literally not one actual fight in it. And the second season didn't have a fight in it until, like, Kropika v... What was his name? The big old one. Like, the strongest of the spiders. I have no clue. (laughs) And then that was it. (laughs) For the first two seasons, you got one fight and that was it. Mm. And there were people that hated it. Because, you know, they were like, you know, all my friends keep telling me that Hunter x Hunter is this amazing anime and it's awesome, but it's just boring. There's no fights. How am I supposed to watch something with no fights? That's boring. I think part of that is because the American audience has associated shonen with fights. You know, when shonen just really means it's for boys, you know? Right. Like Death Note is a shonen uh, series, but you mm-hmm. don't see people fucking blast beam people in the face or, you know? Cross the streams! No, you don't, you don't see anything like that, you know? Um, but people love Death Note. But then they're like, oh, well, since it's not about that kind of fight, then it's okay to not critique it in that way, you know? Right. Uh, it's, I don't know, it, it's weird. Death only is shown in because of technicality. Yeah. The, I, you've ever heard someone say that? Yes. Yeah. I've heard it all the time. All the time. I was in Barnes & Noble the other day. Um, actually, the, the yesterday, we were in Barnes & Noble, and there's this group of kids that came in looking at manga, right? I'm trying to, like, think about what manga, and I just overhear them talking about how, oh, man, this isn't good, the fight scenes aren't great, you know? If you like fight scenes, then this isn't good, and this, this one doesn't have any fight scenes in it, and if you prioritize that, don't, don't, don't do that, and they're talking to their, uh, their friends about, oh, man no fight scenes i don't want to watch that and i'm like dude like, just fucking read fucking read the shit man just read it it's fucking bakuman man it's good it's about manga writing i'm actually the opposite i don't care for that much fight scenes honestly and when they get dragged out i just get bored you just get bored yes i'd rather have less fight scenes yeah i mean it, it's that's what I like about One Piece is like it's not oversaturated with fight scenes. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an important part of the story because you're beating up other pirates, but it's not the most important thing, you know? Right. Because like in Dragon Ball, Goku wants to fight everyone. That's his whole. That's his whole fucking character. He wants to fight everyone, and you know that's gonna be the the basis of the series. Um, right. Like think to think to Dress Rosa. The longest arc in the series, right? And I can only think of, like, three real fights. Like, unless you get super technical and you're like, Oh, Don Sai versus Lao G. Uh, Giant Man yeah. versus uh, Mach Vice. Yeah. Like, you, you can you can break the entirety of the fights did in Dressrosa. Did you just put disrespect to my boy Haru? I forgot his name. There's oh so many God. of them. There's yeah, so many characters to keep track of. Characters. You forgot Alvita's name. No, I didn't. Yeah. 
Like, oh, we, were, we were talking mean, about it like three episodes ago, I think. Alvita, who hasn't had her name said since Logtown. Alvita, <laughs> Alvita is one of the easy ones. Like, if they have like a hard, like, weird name to say, I won't remember it. Right. Like, th- you remember this Vice Admiral who showed up seven times and only had his name dropped once? But Vice Admiral Momonga? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Vice Admiral Momonga. <laughs> But he was cool. He had, Momonga he is the, pretty cool. He has the most screen time out of any Vice. Well, besides Garp. Besides Garp, yeah. yeah. Well, not Maybe uh, Smoker. Like, if we oh, count, yeah. if we count, like, not time he's actually been a Vice Admiral, but just his character overall, I think Smoker takes it. Or, it probably is still Garp, actually. Yeah, I think I think it might be Garp. Garp is, I like Garp. Speaking of which, Garp is in the movie. As Garp well is as, in the movie. As well as everyone else we mentioned. <laughs> Uh, Sengoku's there. I like Sengoku. Yeah. Sengoku was cool. Because, like, he wasn't just a fleet admiral who was like, oh, fuck pirates. He was like, I'm the fleet admiral and fuck pirates. But, you know, at the same time. Right. I'm here because of justice. See, I didn't like Garp's uh, dub voice because I always felt like, for the sub, they made it Luffy but older, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Because that's basically Garp is the Navy version of Luffy, you know? He's fucking wild and shit and you know but for the dub i think they didn't put that emphasis i think they uh, went with generic tough old man yeah they went with you know grizzled old navy guy you know right war veteran yeah i've killed more men than you've seen in your life <laughs> yeah yeah put respect on my name youngin <laughs> what was i saying about dress rosa oh you can split dress rosa into like three major fights right you got Luffy and Law versus Doflamingo, right? And then the other big fight, you got Zoro v. Pika. And then you've got the, uh, what was it? The King Riku army versus the Doflamingo family, basically. Yeah. Right, like, essentially. Like, the rest of the fights are like the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. I think all of the fights total, like, if you just cut out, like, anything that wasn't them fighting, was like 15 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, like, uh, even some fights that I really enjoyed, like, um, fuck, like Bartolomeo and, uh... And, oh, uh, Pop, Pop Man, Pop Pop. Pop, Pop Gladius. Pop. Yeah, Gladius. Uh, Bartolomeo versus Gladius. Um, I, I really enjoyed that fight. Um, Cavendish spoiled the fun, just like he usually does. <laughs> well, that wasn't Cavendish that fought. It was Hakuba. Yeah, Hakuba that fought Bellinger. Oh, man. Bellinger was such a cool character, but he just got shut down like that. In the uh, SBS sections of the manga, uh, Oda says that the reason why Dellinger dresses the way he does is because when he was a baby, he was picked up by the Doflamingo family, and Giola was the person who raised him. So he picked Mm. up her sense of fashion and art style, and that's why he dresses like that with the high heels and everything. Uh, talks, you know, a little bit feminine. Um, there was one yeah. more. When I met Dellinger, I was like, are we getting another Mr. Two? <laughs> Man, De- Dellinger, he could have been a cooler character than what he turned out to be, if I'm honest. Right, but... I mean, that, that's kind of just how he turned out, being a fighting fish, fish man. You know? Yeah. But you're right. He had much more potential to, like, be something. But he got shut down by Hakuba. But I think the reason Oda did that was because he wanted to over... What, what's the word? Like, uh... Over-clarify yeah. Hakuba's strength. Because we saw Dellinger as, like, the strong person, right? Who was, like, beating up Bellamy with zero problems. Oh, and, like. Yeah. Just completely wrecked Edo, who we were seeing as like a super strong person, was like without even breaking a sweat, like saying I'm bored fighting you. Yeah. And we're like, oh shit, this is someone strong. And then seeing Hakuba just come in, and wreck him in like less than two seconds. It, it, it put in the stone how strong Hakuba was. Oh yeah. Which is why I think the reason I think Bellinger was created, to exemplify how strong Hagaba is. Right. Yeah, man. Um, a- another one I liked was... Uh, fuck, man. I can't... No, I... It's like on the tip of my tongue. Uh, EDO. 
No. No G. Gansai. It starts with a K. K. Uh, Kuros. Kuros yeah, versus Kyros. Diamante. I, I like that one. That one was cool also. <clears throat> that one was pretty. That one was pretty cool. It was interesting too because we got uh, uh, Kuros just completely through sheer force of strength cut steel. Yeah. You know, versus like Zoro's Breath of All Things. This was just him brute forcing his way to cut through steel. Yeah. Yeah. Which was awesome. Dude's a monster, man. <laughs> you gotta remember, he beat him with one leg, yes. too. So you just gotta imagine how strong Kiros would have been. Good old toy soldier, man. Ah, oh, dude. It's, it's... It's been a ride. Jason, it's been a ride. It has, indeed. You, uh... Yeah, the, the episode, the newest episode, will come out next week. Uh, it'll be 9.57. It'll cover um, things that are present in Chapter 9.58, I believe. <clears throat> but, yeah. That's, chapter... that's like the Odin flashback, right? No, it's the, what's uh, coming up? It's the in-between chapter. It's, um, Reverie stuff. Oh, right. Um, when we're cutting back to, like, uh, the Warlords... Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then like being that. Yeah. Um so with all that going on, that's it's gonna be pretty exciting in the anime here soon as well. Uh, I can't wait for all this stuff to get animated, man. I, I really like the Odin flashback, so what if that oh, whenever dude. that gets animated. When Red Rock gets animated. Oh dude. Oh god. <laughs> oh dude. It's gonna be so good. Um Jason, closing thoughts on how to how to get uh air or how, what your feelings are about being fully caught up and being a weekly watcher and, and things like that. It's it's weird. I, I've said this before that now that I've caught up to One Piece, no other series is going to feel the same as it would be like pre-One Piece. Now, I don't mean that like getting over my head, One Piece is the greatest anime of all time. Nothing will ever live up to it. I mean, like, in in four months and two days, I watched 956 episodes and then read, you know, 44 chapters. Like, that's a lot of binge watching. <laughs> yes. And that's then I recently finished another anime, like, the day before recording this, and it was 38 episodes long. And I remember looking at it and seeing those 38 episodes long and going, man... This entire anime is the length of half a One Piece arc? And, you know, you gotta think, there are some anime out there that are, like, 12 episodes long. Yeah. You know, like, filler arc episodes. Yeah. And I remember looking at Fairy Tale, because Fairy Tale's on my list of animes I want to watch this year, and seeing it's, like, 330 episodes long, and going, only? So, it's, it's definitely something that's gonna impact me for a while. And, uh, you know, there's not really animes out there that are that long, so I gotta get back to normal watching versus binge watching 30 episodes in a day. I kind of want them to release a, a One Piece Kai. I know that there's a, a fan-made project called One Pace, where they cut out every single bit of filler in the entire series, and they, uh, you know, reconstruct all the episodes and shit. Um, and that's, that's really, it, it's a really good thing to to watch if you're if you're down for that it, it'll help you catch up uh way quicker but it cuts out a lot of time too yeah it cuts out a lot of time but if they do like a one piece kai where they do the same thing that dragon ball z kai did where they they which is what one pace is doing um like hd um just cut out all the fucking filler keep all the good shit in there it'll i it'll do well yeah, man. Yourself. Dude, I'll, I'll salivate over that. I, yeah. Yeah, man. But they'll probably have to wait until One Piece is finished in the anime. And then they'll wait a couple years and then probably re-release it or some shit. Right. Because the anime will finish like a year and a half after the manga. You know, so like once the manga finished, all, you know, like the super fans are going to finish watching the anime. And then once that happens, you know, One Piece is over. They might be, you know, because their, their episode count is already lower than the manga chapter count now so they might be already gearing up to do that 
you know, maybe bit by bit where they're gonna try and finish nearly the same time as the, the One Piece anime, or the, the manga. And that might be a, a neat experience, if I'm honest. We'll get a whole bunch of good paced chapters. Could you imagine the last chapter and the last episode coming out on the same day? Oh, dude. I would... <laughs> Uh, my shit would be rocked. It's, <laughs> it's mathematically not possible. Yeah. But it would be so crazy if it did. I mean, I mean, it, technically it could, but that would mean that Oda would have to tell, like, the anime storyboardists the ending, like, three yeah. months before it happens. And that's kind of what they did with uh, with Dragon Ball Z. They, um, they, they caught up to the manga, like, they caught up to the manga during the Frieza fight, which is why the Frieza fight in the anime is, like, 20-some-odd episodes long. <laughs> Right. They're uh, like, okay, slow down. Yeah. So they, they really had to wait for him to keep writing, you know. And he only did, like, he did less pages than a typical One Piece chapter. It's like 12 pages long. Um, And, yeah, they had to do that. And it, it ended not too long after the manga ended, which was really, really good thing, if I'm honest with you. And it's the same studio that did it, Toei Animation. Um, So, yeah, it's... I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. You know. I it, feeling pretty hard boiled about all, the, all this stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Hard boiled. Oh. So Angela, where can people find you on on the socials? Twitter is Angie underscore Marie nine seven seven. Twitter is Angie underscore Marie nine seven seven. Anywhere else we can reach you? Probably not. The Discord. The Discord. Okay, alright. Jason, where can we find your lovely face on, on the social medias? You can find me at their Discord, or you can also find me on Twitter at SSMKinGuy. And that Discord is regularly published on Twitter, isn't it, Jason? Regularly published on Twitter and our YouTube. It's also in the description of both SoundCloud and YouTube, where you're viewing this right now, actually. Um, this episode will go up at like 4, right? Yeah, okay. in a few hours. This this episode will come out about 4 o'clock. Um, and you'll be able to join the party. You can also, with your questions, comments, and concerns, you can uh, you can find us at Side Peace Anime Podcast on Twitter. You can find us at that same handle on Instagram. You can also find us on Gmail. I don't know if Google Plus is still a thing. I don't think it's, I don't I don't, think it's still I don't a thing. I think it is. Um, that was a... Ooh, that was a failure. That was a disaster. That was worse than Google Friends. Oh, that, God. That kind of dates me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can find us... Uh, you, can, you can shoot us an email uh, at sidepieceanimepodcast at gmail.com. Um, and with... Oh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, me personally, uh, at SSB underscore side. Um, but without further ado, I think that's the, uh, that's the end of the thing. Um... End of the episode. Chapter 1000. That's nuts. Oh my god, man. Chapter 1000. Chapter 1000. Yeah. Ah. 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 Ah.